Welcome back to The Watch and Fallout, the TV series, just released. Yep. And Oz and I, we've watched episode one. Uh, the entire season has been released, which is... Okay, I mean, I, I, I prefer episode by episode myself. The, but um, we're going to try and watch the whole thing. We'll see how we go and then give you the full season review. But first, I think it's really important that we give you a review of episode one because... Uh, how episode one goes really it should be like pretty crucial in terms of how it, it, yeah. it, does it draw you in, make you want to watch the whole, uh, the rest of the series. How well are they adapting Fallout Four universe and things like that, and how good is the story, characters and stuff. And and Oz as a opening, you know, episode. What are your thoughts? Um, the opening of the opening, the first five minutes, yeah. generally pretty good. I, I would agree. I would agree. Yeah, everything then. else was just it, it's exactly what i expected mm -hmm. um yeah pretty bland pretty tame i wouldn't call it the worst thing in the world i would call it very middling mm. with a veneer of being willing to be edgy but it's all like fake really it's it's all it's all just gore and uh it's like it's the progressive version of edgy yeah exactly cringe. exactly and the gore is, like if they're wanting to lead into the gore they basically only hint at it and they don't really dive into it either yeah. and i'm not a big fan of gore actually but the thing is though like if you look at the big violent moments in this episode versus the big violent moments say of game of thrones mm. night and day like they're, 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 if they're going for the shock value or anything like that yeah it's not really there yeah and also in in game of thrones it was like earned and it tied into the actual yeah. drawing characters right mm -hmm. but this was just like Shock Valley for the sake of Shock Valley, but it wasn't really shocking because it's obviously fake. Yeah. It just, it just, it felt forced and a bit lame. Yeah, yeah. Way now, too late. In terms of uh, how uh, woke it is, hmm. not much, but there's the DNA there still. There's little signs. You've got every villain being a white dude, except for the leader of the villains, who's <laughs> a powerful, strong woman of colour. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, like, and there's a couple of other just weird things. Now, like, hmm. <laughs> I found that, like, uh, uh, how, how are we going to talk about the sex scene here? Movies, right? are made, movies and TV show are made for gay people now. Uh, is, that, is that your there's impression? There's no straight nudity allowed. Uh, and, like, I prefer no nudity, flat, okay. Um, but it seems pretty, uh, like, obvious, a bit on the nose now, that if uh, there's going to be objectification, it's going to be the men getting yep. objectified um, and not the women. And I figure I just want people to be consistent. If objectification or over-sexualization is bad, it's bad across the board for men and women, okay? If you're going to be sexualizing and trying to put eye candy in to attract people, right, it's clear that they're only allowed to go one way with, yeah. with this. And like I said, I prefer just no nudity, no sex, mm. okay? Uh, and I'm not saying that sex can't actually be an uh, important plot element. I think they handled that quite well in uh, House of the Dragon, actually. Game of Thrones. Not Game of Thrones. I think Game of Thrones is just jumping the shark with that one. <laughs> Even though it attracted a lot of people and didn't really ruin the show for a lot of audiences. But anyway. <laughs> it improved it for some people. <laughs> for some people. Uh, so those are kind of the main things. And look, that's pretty easy to ignore. It's just that, like, look, we can see what's happening there. This is an Amazon product, but it's... there's nothing overt kind of, uh, oh, comrade, well, you know, bad, bad patriarchy or anything like that. It's actually just a pretty average show. Yeah, but that stuff we all just talked about does leave me just feeling like, oh, another one of these. Yeah, because yeah, uh, it's, it's, it's a modern show, but at least they're not diving into the propaganda. And... Refreshingly enough, the lead female character was charming and probably the best part of the show, but she didn't get enough story or plot to really get you invested in it. Mm. And uh, the thing is, though, there wasn't any of the whole girl bosses, but in actual fact, she had, she needed to be saved, right? Uh, which I really liked. Mm. And um, she also was not overpowered. Like, she actually got overpowered by a stronger man mm. and and she had to work through those limitations to try and survive. Yeah. Which is, like, refreshing. Okay, you know? Yeah, but to be fair, like, the girl boss moments came from every other female. Yeah, the there's... A the, lady getting stabbed the, in the eye and then... And then just grabbing the gun and just... <laughs> like, 
Honestly, though, when the main character, and look, we're already getting into spoilers. We're going to full-on spoilers, but I guess spoiler warning, just in case you're, you're, it's episode one, right? Um, when the main character, Lucy, was about to be killed by the guy, I was like, the pregnant friend's going to come and save her. She? And it didn't. She has, but then I was like, all right, would they, be, would they have the balls to have the father come in and save her? Because that would make sense. But no, she saves herself. And I was like, yeah, figured she'll save us. But she, at least it wasn't like, you know, a girl boss, she overpowered. She had to work through limitations. And then something I did really like later on, mm. she was saved by the dad. Mm. And the dad had a good, strong fatherhood protective moment. And I was like, okay, points. One thing though, that scene immediately. What happened in that scene? She said, "Her or them." Yeah. Then, she, then the dad put her away, mm. and then everyone that was the them got to leave as well. Yeah, exactly. Was okay. It should have been like her or you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's some odd things. There's some odd things. And look, let's go into I guess more full spoilers. But for me, this was enough to make me want to watch the next episode, but not enough to make me particularly like it. I'm just all right. Let's see where it's going. Yeah, it's enough to give it another chance. Mm -hmm. um, whereas I'm obligated to watch all of them. <laughs> <laughs> obligated, but yeah, um, it was just, it was a bit, it was underwhelming, right? What it did do right was the, um, again, the opening was yeah, great, that the was, pre war stuff. It did some of the Fallout world really well, and then some elements of it, I think, really badly in terms of how they introduced the world to the audience. I yeah. think the pacing was dog crap Oof, in awful. this episode. In actual fact, I think they did some massive, massive um, big fails, like big mistakes mm -hmm. with uh, how they introduced the world and the characters and the pacing to the point where it kind of ruined some of the uh, mystery of the Fallout world for the audience. Yeah. And so... This is where we'll be going into spoilers about what how the episode progresses and things like that. So you've been forewarned, but I would give it probably like a four or five at the moment. Or, or... Yeah, I'm sitting at a four or five because it's it's exactly what I expected, but also I'm kind of I'm just so behind the book stuff. But yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now I don't think this is worth doing an episode by episode review, and honestly, people aren't when when a series drops the entire season, mm. episode by episode reviews. Take too long, people get yeah. disinterested. And so we're going to try and just binge the rest of it now and do a full season recap after this. But here is the first episode deep dive, okay? All right, so the episode opens up with the flashback mm. in, in the regular world. And it had all the Fallout tropes, the music, the retro yet, you know, nuclear style yeah. technology. It's focusing on a central character and it's alluding to the... Uh, coming apocalypse fallout. Thing. They really did build that atmosphere of like the, the newsman like I need to know if there's going to be a next week like yeah, yeah. that was that was some good stuff. It was all really good. Yeah. Yeah. Um the character like wasn't enough to make me go oh I love this character but I was like okay he is clearly going to be you know mm. you know trailer you can figure out like yeah. the same actor so I like Walter Goggins he's a great actor mm -hmm. great actor. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, the explosions happen and uh and then cuts to um, 200 years in the future, mm. and it's in the uh, the Fallout shelter. Yeah. Sorry, the vault. And the intro was brilliant. Uh, like, it introduces Lucy, the character, and I felt her intro was actually really well done. It showed her being particularly naive, innocent, mm. but hopeful, uh, and, uh, and also I think she's uh, cute as a button, and I was like, all right, having a, uh, an innocent character that's going to be thrown into the horrifying, violent wasteland, mm. and the, she gets to experience the world through, well, she gets to experience the world anew, and then we get to experience the world through her eyes. That's such a great setup. But then they fail at it, and it starts, to, especially when they jump to other characters, okay? Yeah. They cut her off when she was literally getting into the world for the first time. Like, they, they did this in Game of Thrones at the end, where it's like, mm -hmm. Jon Snow, when he's about to reveal to his family that he's actually a Targaryen, oh, we cut to that. We, we don't need that at all. So like, dumb and annoying. Introducing the main world to a character who's never been outside her entire life. Yes! Uh, cut. Exactly. And what's frustrating is, our first introduction to the Fallout world is now not from Lucy. What happens is they have this build-up with Lucy, where we're going through her life in the vault, and she uh, offers herself to be married to another vault and they have a tunnel to another vault and uh, shock horror it's actually raiders mm -hmm. and they're getting wiped out and uh, then it kind of cuts 
And I'm trying to remember exactly when the cut goes away from the vault to um, uh, the Brotherhood of Steel. It was after... Was it when she left or not? Oh, no, it was no, before yeah, she yeah. left, but it was after the fighting, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Um... Yeah, yeah, it was after the fighting. In fact, it was the explosion. Explosion, yeah. It was the explosion when the dad has to make the choice and the dad gets taken off. And so, all right, all this build-up is actually kind of drawing us in and the dad just got, you know, taken, and you're at the prime point where, all right, we want to see the payoff, okay? Mm. And instead, there's, like, build up, and then they, what, what, what's the term? <laughs> like, cock block you, or, <laughs> what is it, what is it? All soaked up with no place to go. Yeah, like, they just, <laughs> they pull their rug out from underneath you, and they segue to a completely new character. It's like, hang on, you did this work to actually get us somewhat interested in this yeah. character, dare I say invested, and then you rip that all away and you bring in this new character. And not only that, you suddenly have this new character and it's the uh, it's the Wasteland. Yeah, and in it's a complete, complete tonal shift as well. Massive tonal shift. And so the first introduction that we as viewers get of the Wasteland is not through Lucy, who you built up. It's just this random person. And it's not even the best part of the Wasteland. Yeah. It's this crappy, you know, military base of the Brotherhood of Steel. Yeah. And also, it ruins the introduction of the Brotherhood of Steel. Like, when you're playing the Fallout games, it's the, you're from the viewpoint character, and the games feed you the, the Wasteland bit by bit. And it's like everything is is destroyed. There is no organizational stability. And then when you finally come across, like the first Brotherhood of Steel is like, hang on, there's a faction that actually isn't complete anarchy mm -hmm. and they're fighting to keep stability. And it comes as a contrast because you've seen the world in chaos already. Mm -hmm. And then you go to their bases and it's actually a bit clean and a bit set up. And it has this interesting reveal dynamic, especially the viewpoint character that's like, this is, are they worth, you know, siding with because they actually have a bit of stability, mm. but then they there's issues with the Brotherhood of Steel philosophy and all that stuff. And so introducing the Brotherhood of Steel after the Wasteland is like helps out so much for the establishment of the world. They just jump straight to the Brotherhood of Steel. Yeah. And and it's like, oh, so the Wasteland isn't so bad anymore. You got this solid military organization, they're clean, they're not struggling for food, they have all these facilities, stuff like that. Wasteland isn't so bad. And see how it subverts the world building that you want to feed to the character? Yeah, and all the, uh, the, the what they did do though is they've showed that they're really struggling for recruits. They're all a <laughs> bunch of pussies. It seems like that. Men of low character. Yeah. You know, uh, that dude, was Maximus? Maximus, is that his name? Yeah. What a bitch. I, I mean, on, yes, that was my reaction. Like, so we segue to this new character and then it ruins the pacing, it ruins the tone, it ruins the introduction of the world. And then the character is a wet rag, sad sack. He's meant to have been in the military since childhood. Yeah. And he's a, he's weeping for, okay, his mate's hurt, but he's weeping like a bitch because he's he's not even being chewed out. I don't, I, I've spoken to He's him. getting bullied. He doesn't stand up for himself. He just complains and starts smacking at a toilet and stuff. And 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 nothing is endearing us to this character to make him seem uh, strong or independent. And there's unless one thing, but it comes in so late that it's almost a lost cause because his sad sorry is, is just having to get by in the Brotherhood of Steel thing. And then it cuts back to Lucy. And it's like another tonal shift, right? Yeah. And so Lucy is trying to recover in the vault now. And what they could should have done, so like, like they needed, uh, they should have cut the Brotherhood of Steel arc in this episode completely, completely yeah. and only focus on Lucy, especially with the introduction into the Fallout world, right? And then well, she's obviously going to come across Maximus in the world. I think mm. that's the guy in the trailer, by the way, if you've seen the trailer. So that's not really a spoiler or anything. And when he, he comes in and maybe he saves her, maybe he does something like that, you introduce the character first, you get his interest in the character because he ties in with this plot line of the, the character that he first introduces, and then we get the flashback of his backstory. Yeah. That's how you should have done be, it. It'd be way better than what we got. And think about this, Chad. Think about this, right? The people who have literally been sheltered their entire lives, mm. they they bounced back with more stoicism and strength <laughs> from their, half their families being wiped out the yeah. day after than this dude did from his mate getting a leg cut. Yeah. <laughs> and he's been in the military since childhood. Yeah. Yeah, like, and not only that, like, Lucy's recovering from the murder and kidnapping and everything, and then she's just like, she sucks it up. But Maximus is this sad, sorry, weepy wimp. Yeah. Yeah, like, 
But I mean, that makes like Lucy is actually a somewhat interesting character, and uh, she's not a complete like she's not a Mary Sue. She still fails. She gets to be needs to be saved, and uh, she has strength. And and by the way, they do foreshadow her training. Like you know, she really likes the Gun Club and and the uh, and the wrestling club and stuff like that. It's like okay, so she's gonna have some skills. That's good. That's good foreshadowing. But this segue to the other character like just really ruins the episode yeah. in a big way, and uh, and so it goes off to them right. But let's actually backtrack a bit to the fighting when they when um, uh, Lucy she ends up getting married to the guy and then the guy's really a raider after they bang and stuff like that and <laughs> and I'm a little confused as to why they kept up the trade for so long as soon as the doors open they could have just here's the guns do what they need to do yeah. You could make some argument about, you know, dropping their, you know, guard, but who knows? It, yeah, yeah. You got a point, yeah. Uh, and so Lucy, she uh, kills her, uh, like, well, she defeats her husband. He comes back and then that needs to. I was just thinking, like, that's a really, like, <laughs> marriages are short-lived, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, she decides to, she goes to the armory, right? And she picks up a... Uh, a syringe. A syringe. It's yeah, a syringe. syringe. And I remember that from the games, right? But after she syringes a couple of people, they drop their guns. Mm. And I'm like, pick up a gun. Yeah. Pick up a gun. Pick up a freaking gun. She has to pick up a gun. Mm. And then when she's about to leave the floor and everything, she still doesn't have a gun or she decides to take the syringe. And I'm just like, <laughs> this is really stupid. Why aren't you picking up a gun? And they could have sold it that. I, I abhor violence and I don't want to kill anyone. But she doesn't mention anything like that, mm. right? Uh, and I think she's pretty okay with killing the people trying to kill her. Like, she stabs the guy anyway and stuff like that. And so the whole violence thing, throwing the syringe, that's not set up with by the other tangential elements in the show. Just pick up a frigging gun. Yeah, that's just good life advice right there. Actually. I know. And, I mean, I was also expecting, like, they, they were pretty true to many, like, visual elements in the Fallout world. Mm. Like, like, even the style of the vault and and the, even the gangplanks, the walkways, the, the door. We got the uh, pit boys on the wrist and everything like that. But one of the most iconic, like, recognisable things in the Fallout world is the handgun. The first gun that you get. Yeah. I was like, okay, where's the gun? Mm. Like, you, she goes into uh, the, the armoury. I'm thinking, oh, she's going to... No. No, there's nothing, no gun like that. And it's like, come on, we want to see the cool... Like, if you're going to try and give us the whole kind of nostalgia things, references, yeah, and it's weird that they didn't do that when they were doing it in so many other things. And so we see the power armour as well, introduced way too early again. Same with the Verdi Birds, way too early. Like, when you're in the game and you see a Verdi Bird for the first time after, like, everything is a wasteland, you're like, holy crap, that is some serious hardware. Mm. Now it's just, like, spewed out too early. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, they're really... They blew the load too early. <laughs> they blew the load too early, and through them doing that, we didn't get to come. <laughs> and it's left us unsatisfied. I'm I well, I am feeling unsatisfied. I feel unsatisfied. <laughs> Incomplete. They jerk us around like that. <laughs> Waste. That was a good hour of our lives. And no fulfilling yeah. conclusion. All the build up and no payoff. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no explosive finish. Uh but that is the big issue with the episode, yeah. all right? And and so they get too distracted with the other characters. And then when Lucy finally leaves the Fallout shelter, mm. that's it. We don't see anything else for for the rest of the episode. And then we go and we see the ghoul introduced. And again, it's like they don't understand how to introduce other characters, especially with a kind of world like this where it's a innocent person being introduced to a world that they don't know you need to see the world through that character's eyes and, and, the, and the audience is basically a surrogate for the character being reintroduced like that right and we get to kind of by her, their expressions we get that same kind of payoff and interest as they slowly learn about it and therefore when she first comes across the ghoul the brotherhood of steel would have had a lot more of a satisfying you know mm. introduction uh and so she walks off and then uh, a good, a good actual um, contrast to uh, handling flashbacks and introducing characters is One Piece. Okay, Never have you seen you haven't seen? Ah, uh, but the Netflix live action adaptation does it well uh, mm. as well. Like they introduce a new character through the main character's storyline running into them, and after you get to somewhat familiar with this character, mm. right, then it will segue to a backstory 
And then that enriches, mm. especially when they introduce, oh, dang, I forget his name. It is the waiter, though, right? Mm. The waiter and his relationship with uh, the chef head cook, right? You get a flashback of their history, yeah. right? And, oh, man, it builds those characters so well. Mm. But if it were just a segue and jump to the flashback before we really know the character, it, it, it works Horribly, yeah. it just gives you a whiplash about the tone and wh where the story is going. And it kind of emulates how you meet people in real life. You mm -hmm. know, you, you yeah. learn their character, and then eventually you'll find out stuff about them from their past and their, all, yeah. all stuff like that. Um, and they did a similar thing in um, Supernatural with Castiel. Oh, did they? Yeah. yeah. Um, but also, speaking of the thing where it's like you know, seeing the the world through the character's eyes, building that immersion. Remember, so she leaves the vault and she walks outside and then there's the, the helicopter shot and the music's building and then they just cut her off, right? Mm -hmm. Think about Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. When they're, intro they're showing us this vast world, long sweeping mm -hmm. things, the music playing, you know, yeah. you see the landscape. Not out here. They, they literally cut it off. Yeah, and, because after they introduce this vast sweeping landscape, the next thing you as the audience want to know is see the character that you've been following in that world. Yes. Again, set up. No payoff. It's called an establishing shot for a reason. Yes, and they give an established shot of going into the world, nothing. Yep. All right? Now, they might think that that'll get people to go into the second episode. What this does is actually showing the creators of this show are not that good storytellers if they don't understand the pacing and the fundamentals like yeah. this, which gives me concerns for the rest of this season. Yeah. Uh, and I know the guy who did this, he did Westworld as well. Did he? Season one was really good, but it did have pacing issues. Mm -hmm. uh, it was it was generally a great story uh, told with a ton of flashbacks. So yeah. you can do flashbacks really well. If you've seen it, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But yeah, um, did, this was just Did he uh, direct the other seasons of Westworld? Because it went off track. Pretty off sure he did. Massively. And yeah, it did. There was like one or two really good episodes in season two, but that was it after that. Yeah, I heard, and I heard like Gosh. season three and four was... I haven't watched it, but I've heard all the reports are like, it goes yeah. really crap. Yeah, it does. Um, so it's not a complete endorsement that is directing this. No, no. I feel like it's the whole Peter Jackson thing of the first one mm. he did, he took from everybody, you know? But anyway, mm. that's just my assumption. Yeah, and so the ultimate kind of takeaway is that, all right, I'm willing to give it a keep going, but... If the other episodes have similar problems to this, this feels like the show I would probably end up giving up on uh, several episodes in, but we're committed to... Well, it actually, we'll see. We'll see how, what, how far we get into mm. trying to review the whole thing. If it gets so bad, right, that we're checking out, we'll just review up to that and tell you why. Okay? Yeah. And what's what's worse? Something being so offensively bad that you can laugh at it <laughs> and kind of die inside a little bit at it. At least you get something there, right? Mm. Or something that is just really bland. Oh, I tell you what, like, like try, watching all of Echo, you know, so Echo was on Disney Plus. You know, oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, um, uh, Daredevil, you know, wannabe character, right? Watching that whole season was painful. It was a struggle. It was so tough to get through. I hope I'm not into like, Like, this is, a, 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 I would say, a poor to middling start with some hopeful things. Yeah. Lucy... The main character is like the only hope for this show at the moment, mm. which is why it's so dumb that they took away so much of the the attention from her yeah. when she was the strongest part of this episode. Um, and if she continues to being sweet, naive, sh sorry, no, no, naive, naive, <laughs> <laughs> little time, naive, uh, showing some strength, some good arc, and everything like that. But also, we need plot. Mm. Uh, at the moment, they've only hinted at a mystery of some kind. Mm that is something related with the dad and the um, uh, raider that stole them. They seem yeah. to have known each other. I've got predictions. Yeah. I haven't seen anything about this, but I'm assuming the raider lady is related to Lucy. I'm assuming that Lucy's mum is still alive and on the surface mm. because she says, you look like your mum, and then mm. she was probably just told that the mum died and then she'll run into the mum or something like that. Mm. Um don't know what the uh, what could be going on with the dad, but that's they're hinting at that type of plot, and it's like, all right, we'll we'll see, we'll see if it you know is any good. I do have some stuff I know about uh, what's happening in Fallout California in this era, mm -hmm. so I think I know what's going to happen with the dad. Because um, they hint at the Enclave. Yes. And again, they introduce the even existence of the Enclave way too early. Yeah. And also, like, the the world already basically knows the Enclave. Like, there wouldn't be someone like, the Enclave's real. Mm. Like, they knew the Enclave existed before the war actually uh, nuked everything. Oh, really? Yeah, the, it mm. came out. So. But, but the viewpoint character, and especially the characters who usually play in Fallout and therefore mm. Lucy, wouldn't have any idea of yeah. the Enclave. And again, the, the introduction should be 
everything is a complete apocalypse. And then when you find little pockets of civilization, yeah. that's rare, remarkable, unique, and it comes after you've just endured hell, right? Yeah. And so that creates the mystique and intrigue even more. But then just spewing it out so early like this yeah. shows that they don't really understand pacing and the world, mm. like, like how you feed the world to the audience, which is uh, a warning. That's a, that's a, you know, a warning sign mm. to the quality of storytelling in the future. And here's the thing. This is both uh, some leeway, but also like, like it might not be that he's a bad storyteller. It might be that he's just he doesn't understand Fallout. Maybe he's never that's played it. Problem if that's the case. It might be the case because think about these people who make these things. They like I mean, they, they they're such them. a rich lore in history. Yeah. If they, they did not immerse themselves into the games, they are idiots. Oh man. Because there's there like there's I love the games, right? Fallout three, Fallout four. I know Fallout four. Some people have mixed views. I love Fallout four. Mm. Thought it was good. And then we got Fallout seventy six or whatever the the. Oh yeah. Oh, no. 70, oh, I can't swear anymore, can I? <laughs> um, you might get a kick out of this a DLC in New Vegas, which is one of the best. Oh, I games. love New Vegas. Yeah, yeah it's, New Vegas. it's got an entire thing centered around Mormons. Oh, yeah. And it's very <laughs> faithful. And the main Mormon uh, is a badass, you know? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, so. You know, when it comes to trying uh, to bring civilization to a wasteland, we Mormons, we're, we're yep. <laughs> not bad at it. So, again, Lucy is the best part of the show, and half of the show wasn't even focused on her. Mm. Maximus, right? There, there, are, there is a big like sequence of Maximus. Cuts back to Lucy, and then back to big sequence of Maximus, and he just keeps getting worse and worse. And he's boring. His uh, is uh, sorry for himself. He's a crybaby. Uh, his friend gets promoted, and uh, and uh, he is feeling even more dejected. The friend, I think, was very intentionally depicted as. Uh, yeah. Uh, what androgynous, you would say? Uh, well, yeah, yeah, definitely that. But like, you know, the woman gets the now look emotional of a dude. But the thing is, right? It, it's in a military world, masculine thing, and so look, maybe like I don't, I don't begrudge a, a, a woman having to act more masculine yeah. in, in a military environment. On one side, she was skinny as a bone, but yeah. on the other, Maximus is a pussy. So, <laughs> who's the military going to go for? Honestly, the skinny is the bone who's... Probably, probably. And so the promotion that she got, um, though I did have to question if she was a she at times, because... She did have a bit of a... Um, had a bit of a moustache, right? But she is a Latina lady. Uh, I don't know, yeah. Right? Um, I didn't question the promotion thing. Mm. But anyway, someone slips a razor blade into her, her boot, uh, cuts up a foot, and it's like... I mean, if the mission is urgent, yeah, you could say that... Um, uh, the promotion might need to go to someone else, but still, a foot can heal. It's not like you know they they they, they lose their qualifications all of a sudden. Yeah, I'm just thinking, why would you do that? Like, what kind of low character do you have to have in the military? You know, unless you're Pat Tillman, you really shouldn't. You know, I don't know who Pat Tillman is. Pat Tillman was a very famous person joined the military and mm -hmm. got killed by his own men jumping up and down saying, "I'm Pat Tillman." Okay. From like twenty feet. Oh. Anyway, so every time you do a friendly fire joke, you got to reference Pat Tillman. Oh. I'm Pat Tillman. <laughs> <laughs> da -da 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 -da. <laughs> I get worried sometimes. Whenever you make a joke that I don't understand the context for, I get very worried because... <laughs> oh, I'm so evil. All right. Um... <laughs> well, then I won't do that again, Shad. <laughs> See why I have to denounce everything Oz says and just Oz? Every single thing. Everything, everything. And him. Just accept those. All right, I enjoy so it's obviously some of the jerk guys in the military that did it. But then they sit Maximus down. It, so his name is Maximus. Maximus. He does not deserve such a, you know, Chad name. No. More like... Like Gladiator. Maximus. Yeah. He was Maximus. This guy... More like... Tampaximus. That's a... Tampax is a tampon. Yeah, I know. Yeah, okay. Look, I did my best. The word player had it. Hey. Moving on. They sit him down and they're like, you know, did you do it? And his acting's like, oh, so afraid, so so girly. And then he even says, like, I didn't do it, but is it wrong if I wanted to? And at that point, I was like, screw this guy. Piss off. I do not give a stuff about him now. If I'm interrogating a guy and I'm like, did you do this? And he's breaking down. No. But is it wrong if I was happy it happened? You're immediately my suspect now. Right. <laughs> like, because what's next? Okay, I saw someone do it. Okay, I did. Like, that's like, what a mm. what a bitch. Yeah, yeah. I I was completely checking out this character. Then they tried to 
save him somewhat by giving him a small strong moment where he says, but I would give my life for the brotherhood and be grateful my life meant something in the end. But look, that, that's not saving this guy. This guy, like, I, I do not care about this character. He now. couldn't get asked a couple of questions without bawling his eyes yeah, out. He's yeah. not going to give his life up. And then the, then he's like, the, the old guy's like, good boy, and he gets the promotion. They leave, and he breaks down crying again. It's like, oh, what a bitch. Yeah, I, uh, and then, and so I do not care about his strike. And the whole, half the episode seems like it was devoted to this character that is just... An annoying, pathetic character that I don't like right now. So well done for basically ruining what could have been a, a decent first episode. Yeah, yeah. But like I said, they do kind of seem to just uh, chicken out on a lot of things, like how edgy they're willing to go, how violent and other things. They could have done a lot more, but, you know, it seemed like they were, were trying to pretend to be and, uh, and then they really mess up with the storyline plot. And the ghoul thing, I mean... I didn't find, I didn't get anything out of that. It's just like, yeah, okay. There's, there's no stakes being built. There's no, nothing actually really shocking happening. You know, it's yeah. all very by the numbers. Mm -hmm. In the and, and when there is something like gore or anything like that, it is so unoffensive that there's, there's nothing to it. Well, that seems like very <sighs> typical of modern films and thing. They don't want to be offensive. And in order to tell the truth about anything, you have to risk being always... offensive. Or Jordan Peterson, but you will always offend someone, something. And so, if you're so desperate to offend no one, I mean, you're never going to be able to say anything really of value. Yeah. And uh, and you have a show that doesn't have any real impact. Mm. Okay. And so, that's where we're at with Fallout episode one. Yep. We will see what the rest of the season looks like. But based on that, I'm interested to hear if you guys think it's worth checking out. For me, if I was like to listen to our review, I would be like. Nah, I'm gonna wait until. Yeah. How does the rest of the season go? I would not recommend people to pick this up and watch Fallout based on this first episode at the moment. You'd get more thrills out of like spending an hour making a sandwich. I reckon mm -hmm. that would be more entertaining than this was. You more reckon? fulfilling at the end as well. well. Definitely more fulfilling. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. and satisfying. So. Watch your missus make a sandwich uh, for an hour. <laughs> if she's that slow, come on. Uh, <laughs> uh, and yeah, just just sign off on this one. Unless you really like Fallout and uh, want to feel the pain that I felt watching Halo. <laughs> but uh, hang in there and look out for the next uh, review we have on Fallout, the Amazon live action adaptation. And until then, stay on watch. Stay on watch.